we have covered the life and work of Julian Hawthorne in episode 199. Today we will review his 1880 Gothic novella, Kildherm's Oak. I am reviewing the 1888 edition, which also contains a strange friend which I shall go over first. It takes place in New England and has the narrator visit Pinefield, a small town he had studied in 20 years before. Here he discovers the former rector's daughter Elsie had died, and uncovers a whole tragic story regarding her rejecting her first suitor and the subsequent disappearance of her son, with the whole of Pinefield thinking she had murdered him. A strange man, whose manner of relation to the woman or her son is never explained, appears and exposes the true culprit at her funeral. The story has a few nice melancholy touches when the narrator reminisces about the past, as well as lamenting for those aged persons of his boyhood acquaintance who now reside not above ground but below. The stranger's story also has hints of the horrible, especially his strange and unexplained bouts of terror, which reduce him to a wreck and has him seek refuge and protection from his own domestic servants while in India. But the final portion is a bit too melodramatic. Not poorly written, but it loses the melancholy feeling of the first third and the strangeness of the second, and the rest is not as good. However, our interest lies mainly with the titular Kildum's Oak. The story begins in merry old England during the reign of James I around the time of the gunpowder plot. Sir Brian Kildurm, a trusted agent of his majesty in subduing revolts against his rule, is returning one time to Kildurm Castle when he confronts an unnamed giant of a man. The two fight until the red-bearded giant, by stroke of bad luck, has his blow arrested by the branches of the venerable Oak of Ennerdale, and thus Sir Brian kills him and returns home with the prize the man had on him. Confronting his wife Ursula, whom he had much neglected as a husband, she scoffs at his accusation, and then, in revenge for the murder of a man she calls holy, kills herself beneath a castle, and there, beneath her body, are planted the acorns of the Oak of Ennerdale, soaked in the red man's blood, and her own, and from this springs forth the Oak of Kildurm. This oak, having a fantastical appearance, as of a man with arms raised to the heavens, is seen as a baleful influence to all who would pass over it, except those of the Kildurm blood. It is believed... The oak has more than sap running for its veins, and a plaque containing a cryptic prophecy is hung upon it, soon overgrown and becoming part of the wood itself. The family fortunes, while going from bad to worse, seem at times influenced by the tree, sometimes for very tragic consequences. The story then follows many generations of the family and their dealings with the oak, until eventually a crime is committed which involves the oak, and the lady killed him at the time becomes insane, and proceeds to talk to and hear strange things from the oak, which she terms her friend, and becomes a much sought prophetic medium due to a discourse with the tree, never regaining her sanity, but espousing strange prophecies of the oak's end and of her own. The final section, not bad at all, though not as colourful as the earlier portions, the ending with courtiers and royalists and opposers of Cromwell, ends with these prophecies being realised, and the oak being no more. I have taken pains to spoil as little as possible, as this short novella is very enthralling, and I enjoyed it immensely.